Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this finds you well and everything going as you would have it. As we begin class today, I would like to read to you a verse from Isaiah 41. It is verse 10. It says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Please pray with me. Lord God, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for helping us. We thank you for holding us up with your righteous right hand. Lord, we praise your name. We ask that you use us in mighty ways. And we pray this through Jesus. Amen. So yesterday you did a great job evaluating algebraic expressions. Today we're going to write algebraic expressions from situations. So we're going to translate words into symbols and operations, and um, you're going to do a great job. So to write algebraic expressions, we must first define a variable. So we're going to choose the letter that we're going to use, and we're going to tell what that letter represents. So look at example number one in your textbook. This is on page 540. Example number one says $8 more than Ryan earned. So we know that it's $8 more, but do we know how much Ryan earned? No. So let's choose a variable. Your book chooses one, but I'm going to, um, they choose D, probably to represent dollars. So let's go ahead and use that. So D represents Ryan's earnings. This is, oops, you can't see the very well. This is defining the variable. This is the variable D, and to define it means to tell what it means. D represents or means Ryan's earnings. So to write an expression, $8 more than Ryan earned, we're gonna take what Ryan earned and we're going to add $8 to it. You might ask, is that it? And the answer is yes, that's it. So we just were to write the expression, uh, write the phrase in as an algebraic expression. So that's it. So let's do another one. Example number two says $10 less than the original price. For some reason, this may be the most difficult thing we do, is to write this using numbers and symbols. So $10 less than the original price. We know the $10, but we don't know the original price. So let's make our variable P for the original price. Yesterday, I said avoid using the um, multiplication symbol that looks like an X for multiplication because it often looks like an X, which we use as a variable. Um, I'm going to also suggest avoid using O as a um, a variable because it looks very much like the number zero. So we're going to use P for the original price. This is $10 less than the original price. So the reason I say this is super important, it really doesn't matter what order you add, but it completely matters what order you subtract. So we're going to begin with the original price and then we're going to subtract $10. Think of it this way. If I have $20 and you have $10 less than I have, you have 
only $10. We take my $20, we subtract the $10 less that you have to get how much you have. So less than, we start with the original price and we subtract 10. So let's do a, several more actually. So example number three says four times the number of gallons. We, we know four times, but do we know the number of gallons? No. So let's let G represent the number of gallons. Four times the number of gallons could be written as four times G. It could be written for with G in parentheses, but typically we write this algebraic expression as 4G. So we know that when we jam a number up against a letter, that means to multiply. Okay, so now let's work on the got it problems. four points fewer than the bulls scored. So let's, um, let's represent S for the bulls score. Um, and let's say our team scored four points fewer. So I'm sorry about the glare. There we go. Let's take the Bulls score and subtract the four points fewer that our team scored. So the algebraic expression would be S minus four. Now you didn't have to use S, you could use some letter that represents um, the Bulls score try to use something that makes sense to you, okay? So that was A. Let's look at B. Twelve times the number of feet. So we don't know the number of feet. Let's make F represent the number of feet. Notice I begin by defining the variable every time. B says 12 times the number of feet. So we'll write 12F. That's an algebraic expression right there. Now let's do C. The total cost of a shirt and an $8 pair of socks. So we don't know the total cost of the shirt. Um, maybe C is the cost of the shirt. Be sure and define the variable. We're going to, the total cost of the shirt and, and um, the operation that represents and is plus. So we're going to add the cost of the shirt plus the socks, which are $8. There's our algebraic expression. Sometimes you will have more than one operation in an algebraic expression. You experienced that yesterday in evaluating the al algebraic expressions. So let's look at, at example number four. Write the phrase five less than three times the number of points as an algebraic expression. So five less than what? Three times the number of points. So let's let P represent the number of points. We need five less than what? three times the number of points. So three times the number of points can be written 3p, but our algebraic expression is 
five less than that. Um, be careful with subtraction. Make sure that your expression really represents what's said in the situation. Now let's do the got it problem that is D. Write the phrase $3 more than four times the cost of a pretzel. Okay, so maybe I can do that here. Write the phrase $3 more than what? Four times the cost of a pretzel. So maybe my variable could be P for the cost of a pretzel. You could have made it a different letter, it doesn't matter, but you're going to define that variable, tell what that variable represents. So $3 more than four times the cost of the pretzel. So four times the cost of the pretzel, we want more than, $3 more than, so we're gonna add three to that. There's our algebraic expression that is representative of this situation. One more. Now turn the page in your textbook to page 542. Example number five blends what you learned yesterday in evaluating algebraic expressions and what you learned today about writing algebraic expressions. So let's read it. Terry bought a magazine for $5 and two bottle of, bottles of nail polish. Write an algebraic expression to represent the total amount she spent, period. Let's work on that before we do the next step. So she bought a magazine for $5 and she bought two bottles of nail polish. So let's say two N to represent the nail polish. This represents the situation, don't you think? But we're not done. It says, then find the total amount if each bottle of nail polish cost $3. So the nail polish costs $3. Oops, right in the spotlight. So let's replace the N with the number three. So five plus two times three. Order of operation says that we do the multiplication for first. So two times three is six plus five is 11. 11 what? $11. So this was part of our answer. Um, we should have defined the variable, the cost of the nail polish. That's one bottle, cost of one bottle of nail polish. Oops, it's right in the spotlight. Um, this is our algebraic expression that represents um, the situation. Once we replace our variable with three, we get a total of $11 that it cost for her nail polish. As you're writing these algebraic expressions, let me encourage you to reread the situation after you've written the expression to make sure that your expression appropriately represents the situation. I hope you have a great day.